This is the 2023 Brewtubers Online Brewers Club Yeast Experiment, British Brown Ale. Thanks to our sponsors, Imperial Yeast, Five Star Chemicals, Yakima Valley Hops, Beer and Wine Hobby Homebrew Store, and Brewers Hardware. Let's get tasting. Hello, everyone. This is Kurt from Fermentation Adventures, about to try another beer in the Brewtubers Yeast Experiment uh, for 2023 for this year for our British Brown Ale Experiment, or I should say our British Brown Beer Recipe with different yeast strains. Uh, the next recipe, or the next beer I'm going to try is from Brookside Brews, right here. Uh, this is from uh, Sean uh, at Brookside Brews. If I refer to Sean or Brookside, you'll know who I'm talking about. Uh, he brewed with uh, White Labs WLP005 and it was canned on October 4th. So that's all the information I have about Sean's beer. Um, I, yeah, I don't know the ABV or anything. It should all be in the general range of the rest of our recipes, uh, the rest of our beers. All right, so so yes, Sean brewed with uh, White Labs WLP005, which is simply named British Ale, I believe. That's the name of the strain. Um, it's an early sequence number for White Labs where they were not being terribly creative with the names, obviously. Um, so yeah, let's open this up and uh, pour this beer out. Uh, let's see. Let's shake out the glass. Put it here. Let's see if I can open it on camera. There you go. Nice little hiss. I don't see any gas coming out of here, which is fine. Um, I don't want to pour the whole can in uh, just in case there's any settling or sediment. Um, sorry to Matt at Rec Brewing. I kind of did that with his beer and uh, I probably shouldn't shouldn't have. Um, so anyway, so what do we got here? Um, it is, uh, you know, classic brown color. Um, the head, again, similar to the rest of our beers. It's ivory, off-white. Um, I did not get much of a head, um, or what I did dissipated rather quickly, um, as you can see probably on camera. I didn't pour terribly or too vigorously. Uh, where's the, you don't want the Bass logo in the camera shot. Um, so yeah, it uh, dissipated pretty pretty quickly. Um, it is pretty clear. If I look at my fingers through here, I can see it. Um, I wouldn't say it's brilliant clarity. Where's the logo? Yeah, I can tell the logo's there. Um, so it is a little bit darker. It looks a bit darker than... Uh, than uh, mine came out again might have been that change in clarity that we have here um as we drink and taste here we'll see if the we get any more head to come back and and uh, any retention for us um again going looking through generally uh how it would talking points based on the bjbc scoring sheet uh color clarity we hit all that um yeah, it's cool. So, all right, so let's get into the aroma. Let's see. Try to get a little bit more head up here. Mm. Yeah, so... Again, somewhat similar to the rest of the beers. Um, it's very... Uh, very classic, you know, like the... Again, I'm getting a similar burnt sugar uh aroma from this um the dark malts um again some light toast i am getting smelling something here in the background I'm having a hard time with let's see yeah um yeah again that that you know the dark crystal malts kind of the burnt sugar um again the kind of the dark toast not on the roasty end um it's it smells to me 
thinking back to Gam Dude's beer with WLP002. I think it smells pretty similar to uh, to that beer, but the aroma is probably not as strong. Not it didn't jump the the malt character didn't jump out of the glass like uh, Billy's did. Uh, you know, again, um, I'm pretty much taking these beers right out of the fridge, letting them sit for a little bit to warm up a, a tiny bit, uh, but not a whole lot. Let's see if I can. Yeah, I'm getting something in there too that I would consider uh, fermentation character wise. Again, it's probably just from the carbonation itself. And again, the carbonation, I don't really see any bubbles coming up here, but I know from, you know, it was in a can and trying to squeeze the can, it was kind of uh, fairly firm so uh, let's see um, the aroma and again not getting any hops off this what i would consider a hop aroma since i know what i'm looking for here yeah maybe a little bit of that uh, of the herbal hop is kicking through a little bit maybe but again it's very if it's there it's very faint maybe confusing it with some of the other just the, uh, you know, kind of the CO2 kicking up the malt and letting it dissipate a little bit. So I'm getting a little confused here. All right, let's go for a sip. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely, um, again, I think kind of probably similar to uh, what I mentioned uh, when we when I tried uh, Matt's beer, Wicked, Wicked Brewing. Um, I'm getting a little bit of a character, of a, you know, kind of an ethanol flavor from it. Again, it's not hot, but I definitely can taste it in there. Um, I'm going to try again. Yeah, again, more of the, you know, some more of the roast or the caramel is in here, the light toastiness. Um, again, I, I think it's somewhat similar to uh, Gam Dude or Billy's, um, but but it's not as pronounced as, as his beer was. Um, let's see, the bitterness in here... Um, Yeah, I'd say it's appropriately bitter. I get um, the bitterness in, in Sean's beer to me. I, I, I guess it's kind of presenting more on the um, on the tip of the tongue almost. Um, and it does give somewhat of a drying effect. Um, again, I wouldn't characterize it as like a stringency or anything like that. Um, as kind of a mouthful and creaminess. I wouldn't say it's really um, creamy either. Um, not terribly creamy. Um, hmm. Yeah, as I'm drinking more and more of it. I am getting, yeah, yeah. Last couple sips, I would say I'm getting a little bit of creaminess from it. Um, Again, more of a kind of a retro nasal uh, toastiness is, is coming up through here. Maybe, um, again, I wouldn't say it, maybe it is a little bordering on ro roastiness. I am getting a little coffee, coffee coming through, interestingly, with Sean's, I think. Um, a little bit that I would characterize uh, coffee. Um, you know, yeah, I, I definitely, now that I've had a few sips, the bitterness is certainly uh, um, lingering there. Um, probably it is skewing, you know, from the balance. Um, it's definitely probably skewing more towards, um, I wouldn't say it's skewing towards bitter, but it is skewing probably a little bit more bitter than I would think for a brown uh, than I would normally expect. But again, um, for, the, for the style, but it's, it's 
a very drinkable, very, um, you know, I take a sip, I want another one. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, again, like light, uh, you know, like lightly roasted coffee, um, some toast, some dark crystal. I would think I would think um, some hops coming through. Uh, again, it's I know the hops are there. Uh, maybe I wouldn't even at this point. I would just it's kind of like a generic hop flavor for me. I wouldn't say it's uh, herbal or or anything anything like those classic descriptors. I'm getting more just kind of a little bit of. Uh, classic bitterness is, is uh, kicking up and really balancing everything out to make this really dr uh, really drinkable beer you know really flavorful really drinkable um, so yeah so I think I hit everything you know finish aftertaste um, you know finishes um, definitely doesn't finish sweet um, definitely doesn't finish very dry um, there is a little bit of drying effect there so the mouthful is a little feel is a little in between I would say um, again, the balance, again, probably skews more, more towards multi, obviously. Um, but the old kind of the overall, there is a, uh, you know, a noticeable hop, uh, presence in there that, that really is offsetting this and kind of not making it a, a sickly brown, um, or overly sweet brown ale, which, you know, I've had sometimes and really didn't enjoy. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Um, yeah, I think I think that's it. Um, overall, now if I come through and I I start to to rank them out, um, and recapping on the last beer, if I say again yeasts that I would choose for the style, um, and again based on the beers, um, I think Billy's Gamdu is is number one. I'd probably still rank mine in here as second, because um, again with at least with the beer that that I that I, I brewed and it came through, it seemed like the malt was probably a little bit more, um, um, had a, a little, a bit more pre presence and a little bit, was a little bit more expressive. Again, I'm taking pours right off my kegerator and uh, it's not a beer that was shipped around a couple of times, um, or to, to finally get here and it, for me to pop open a can and package and everything. So maybe my beer is a little bit of a unfair advantage. Unfortunately, unfortunately. Um, but then after that, um, I, I'd put Sean's beer. I put Brooks, Brookside number three and, uh, sorry, Matt, I think you're still, I still have your beer on the bottom, um, for, uh, for, uh, for the reasons, um, I guess I talked about in that video. Um, I just, just know right now drinking Sean's beer and thinking back to that one, I'm really, uh, um, Again, this one is striking me as probably a better, a better yeast strain for for a brown, uh, British brown. Okay, that is it. Um, let me wrap up there. Uh, thinking back, I want to thank our our club sponsors, uh, being of course brew, beer and wine hobby, uh, Five Star Chemicals, Yakima Valley Hops. Uh, <sighs> Losing track of which ones I haven't mentioned yet. Um, Imperial Yeast. And uh, that can't be it. Beer and Wine Hobby, Five Star Chemicals, Yakima Valley Hops, Brewers Hardware, and Imperial Yeast. That's five. Uh, so, so again, thanks for those great companies for sponsoring us. And stay tuned and look, there should be another video. I'm sure you haven't watched them all yet. Uh, keep watching, like and like my like the video, subscribe to my channel, check out the BrewTubers YouTube channel as well. All right, thanks.